Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Wakefield High School Athletic Department, I'd like to welcome you to Atlantic Field here in Wakefield for today's varsity football game. The Wakefield Warriors will host the Melrose Red Raiders. Today's game is being conducted under the rules of the Regulations of Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association. Wakefield is pleased to welcome the players, coaches, and spectators to the game. We expect a hot court game, if the kids competitive game, and we encourage the spectators to cheer the team. However, we believe sportsmanship is the ultimate importance and will not take our negative cheering or unsportsmanlike like that of the fans or the participants of the game. Massachusetts General Bylaws prohibit the use of tobacco, tobacco products at high school sporting events. Wakefield High School abides by this law and does not allow use of any tobacco products within the confines of Landing and Field. We thank you for your cooperation. Once again, today's game is being conducted under the rules and regulations of the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association as well as the Massachusetts Middlesex League. The game officials are well trained and experienced in properly running of this football game. They will carry out their duties in a highly professional manner as spectators. We expect and ask you to respect their calls and judgment and enjoy the game. Can the Winfield, I'm sorry, can the Melrose team go under the end rope, please? Under the goal post, please? Once again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Landing the Field today for our Middlesex League Thanksgiving game between the Melrose Red Raiders and the Wakefield Warriors. As customary in our Thanksgiving game, we honor the seniors of both teams. At this time, we'll introduce the seniors from the Melrose Red Raiders. And I'll introduce the captains last. Number two, Jamie 
Haggerty. Number three, Rob Colozo. Number four, Koji Kang. Number eight, Liam Maha. Number nine, Brad Brady Pitcher. Number 32, Rowan Smith. Number 52, Thomas Foley. Number 53, Luke Maha. Number 56, Patrick Lucian. Number 58, Zach Federico. And now the captains. Number five, Sean Fogarty. Number seven, Trevor Bodo. And number 51, Justin Camelio. Head coach of the Melrose Red Raiders is Tim Morris. And now the rest of the Red Raiders. At this time, we'll introduce the seniors from the Wakefield Warriors. Once again, the captains will be brought out last. Number four, Jack Huggins. Number six, Josh Catino. Number eight, Matthew Beattie. Number 16, Jack Berenado. Number 50, Luke Huckies. Number 55, Dominic DeVito. Number 61, James Buckley. Number 73, Nathan Huckies. And now our captain. Number 14, Brian Lynch. Number 20, Leo Yadumian. Number 75, Chris Amioni. Head coach of Wakefield Warriors, John Rafferty, and the rest of the Wakefield Warriors. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we will request you to stand for a moment of silence for people that have passed away that are associated with the presence here at Wakefield and Wakefield High School. On the day of thanks, we gather with friends and family and we remember those, <coughs> the loved ones who are no longer with us. This past year, the town of Wakefield and Wakefield High School after the Kulak family, a number of special people including, but not limited to, Robert Ford, Zach Boyagis, Lawrence Brennan, Martha Callahan. We ask you to please pause for a moment of silence and remember these special people, individuals, and also anyone else we've lost over the past year. Thank you very much. Please remain standing for the National Anthem, which is played by the Wakefield Warrior Marching Band under the direction of Mr. Thomas Banker.
At this time, ladies and gentlemen, there's your attention to midfield where the corn flip to today's game. football fans back to the 61st annual Thanksgiving game between Wakefield and the Melrose Red Raiders. I'm here, Timothy Brown with Drew Stremelhorn, and let's see how the coin flip goes here. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Wakefield has won the pass and deferred. It'll be Wakefield winning the toss here. Now will receive. Wakefield kick off from the score going into the field. And it's going to be Melrose starting to receive the first half from Wakefield kicking off. Wakefield having a decent season, finishing five and four, while the Melrose Red Raiders having a losing season of three and seven. This football game is a huge tradition between Wakefield and Melrose, and unfortunately we couldn't have that last year, so this will be 728 days since the last Turkey Day Classic. Wakefield trying to get a big win here, not winning since 2013. I think this game would mean a lot to the Raiders too after coming off a disappointing season three and seven to end it. Wakefield had a strong start to their season. They finished four and one in their first five games with wins over Greater teams like Greater Lawrence, Belmont, Burlington, and Winchester. And even though they had a strong start to the early season, they also had two heartbreaking overtime losses, which really just unfortunately actually took them out of the playoffs and as they were one game short of being in this year's division, th division playoffs. Number 44, Mark Lex with the kickoff. Deep for Miller. Lex shirt set to kick off here for Wakefield. Sophomore Mark Letchford. Fogarty and Maha Deep for Mellon. And we kill with the kick. Shea Fogarty catches that. Runs it forward heavy up to about the 30 for Melrose. Looks like that was freshman Luke Dixon with the tackle there, number 88. Run play there from Melrose. That'll be a gain of seven there for Melrose, bringing up second and three. Another handoff there for Melrose. Not much of a gain on that too. Fogarty on the carry, stopped just over the 35 yard line. Got a second set up, third down and three. Third and three here after the stuff from Wakefield. Yeah. 
to be Puerto Rican captain Trevor Botto from Melrose taking the snap here. Another handoff. Up the middle. Great fake there by Botto. And that's going to get Melrose the first down. Prado airing it out for the first time. Juggled for a little bit there and dropped by Rob Coazzo, or I'm sorry, Jamie Haggerty there. Second and ten here for the Rose Road Raiders. Botto hands it off to number eight, Liam Maher. Not much of a gain there. Looks like he was tackled by senior captain Brian Lynch there. Great tackle by Lynch. And this will bring third and eight. Lucky for Melrose to pass right here. Bob's going to take the snap. Looking to his receivers. Throws a little check down. Cutting moves. Decent. In and out. Decent gain there for Shane Fogarty, another Third captain for Melrose. Huge crowd here on this Thanksgiving morning. Great to see fans coming out and supporting high school teams. That dump pass seemed to get just short of the first down. Fourth and one here with the ball on the 47. And that Melrose offense is not going away. Fourth and one here. Wakefield needs a big stop. It'll be an, another QB sneak, and he will pick up the first down and more. Two times that read option has tricked the Wakefield defense. We'll see if that tendency keeps up for them to bite. And another run play here from Melrose. And a decent gain there. I believe that was Liam Maher, number eight, on the carry. Liam Maher, the carry, down on the third, one yard line. Second, a third, a second down on three. Second and three here for Melrose. Kyle takes the snap. It's going to be a pass play. Toe tap by Rob Colazzo there. And that will probably get Melrose the first down. Another read option, Botto. It's a decent game, about three yards there. Power with the snap, looking the pass. Rolls out, he's taken off. 
And that'll get the first down there. Melrose Red Raiders rumbling. Knocked out of bounds there by Wakefield's Timothy Connolly, number 13. And it may not be looking like it in these early first plays, but Wakefield's defense has had a great season already. They've been led by senior captain Chris Amione and, Ian, and junior Ian Dixon. And they've created a, form, a pretty good front this season along with seniors Nate Icky. It's going to be another run play here. And he's going to get in for the touchdown. Shea Fogarty driving through there. Melrose really just decimating Wakefield's defense on this opening drive. I mean, all the strengths we thought they had, it just looked to crumble right there. It looks like the Thanksgiving Day nerves for Wakefield have just settled in. This will be Melrose taking the early lead here, 6-0. Number 58, Zach Federico. We'll take the extra point here. And the kick is good. Sailing way over the uprights. Melrose off to a strong start here. Let's see if they can keep that momentum on defense. This rivalry dates back over 100 years, all the way back to 1901. This will be the 111th time these teams meet in the 61st annual Thanksgiving Day football game. The record in those 61 games consists of 36 wins by Wakefield, 31 wins by Wakefield, and 26 by Melrose. However, Melrose in regular game seasons, or just games, has a lead in 62 wins, 41 losses, and there has been seven ties. And they're in a fun with that kick, Wakefield. Wakefield seems to fall on top of it. Bobby DeFeo just fumbled that kick. Not a good start for him. Although he has had his highlights this season returning the ball. He had a kickoff return versus Belmont. This season, unfortunately, it seems like DeFeo has had an on and off. Just sometimes he gets a kick return, sometimes he'll, be, he'll fumble it, and sometimes he just gets stopped right at the 10, like we see now. We'll see junior quarterback Javen Willis is going to take the snap right on the 10 yard line. It's going to be a running play for Willis. And he's going to get a decent amount of yards. Now, I don't expect Willis to get a lot of passing plays here. He's coming off a recent hand injury, which kept him out for a little bit but hopefully Wakefield can come past that and get some good plays out here on offense. A big highlight for this Wakefield offense has been senior captain Leo Yardumian with his 1,084 rushing yard season and over and in total 12 TDs. Yeah, that's going to be 12 rushing TDs along with three passing touchdowns. So a great season for senior captain Leo Yardumian. And that's going to be another run play by Yardumian there. He's going to get a decent game there. And despite Willis's hand injury, he's also, he's a great dual threat here. He's had 10 passing touchdowns along with six rushing touchdowns. A great season for Willis and hopefully trying to get 
another great game here in this Thanksgiving Day match. Another handoff here. Wakefield seems consistent with the rushing attack. Not much of a gain there, but they'll definitely get a gain. This will be second and seven for Wakefield. Let's see what Willis has in store for us. Willis is going to take the snap from Nate Ickes, and he's going to run it. Flag thrown there. It's going to be a handoff to Nathan Delgado, the junior, who has had two rushing touchdowns this season. Good season as an alternate. Looking like a false start on Wakefield here, though. Stumping that large game there. Spotted right around the 17 yard line here from Wakefield. So this will be second and 21 for Wakefield here. I don't think the rushing game is going to help them here. I think they're going to definitely need to go pass play. And it's going to be a Willis run, and he's going to find some space. Taking that pitch back with some expert play there. Willis charging through for about 11 yards there. Great gain there by Willis. This will bring him third and nine. So I think in order to get that first down, we're gonna really need to say, see some passing plays here for. Wakefield, the running game, it's going to help them, but they really need to start marching down the field. Other than that play right there, they've been pretty predictable, lining up in this field goal-like formation. We've got one receiver on the outside. All right, do we in motion? They toss it out to Delgado. Charging Delgado is going to get a big game. He found some open space out there. That'll bring him to about half field and a good first down there for Wakefield. Great run by junior Nathan Delgado. A 20 yard gain there for Delgado. If running's going to be a strategy today, they got to get creative with it like that. Yeah, absolutely. And they definitely have a lot of targets here. Senior captain Leo Yardum, who we know has had over 1,000 rushing yards, and Nathan Delgado coming off that huge 20-yard game. This will be just behind the 50-yard line. It's going to be another handoff to Yardum. And not too much of a gain there. Picking up two yards there. So this will be second and eight for Wakefield. Ball spotted right around on the 49 yard line. And we just have three minutes left in this opening quarter. Stephen Weish. Widen up out to the right. Sophomore from Wakefield there, Stephen Weish. And another handoff there. They're going to get some space. Nathan Delgado. Delgado looking shifty today. A great run there by Nathan Delgado. 22 yard gain and a warrior first down. And we haven't seen much from the junior Nathan Delgado in previous games, but he's really showing that he is an asset here for this Wakefield team. Hopefully in next year in his senior year, he will be the starting running back for Wakefield. 
really just proven that he is a great running back for this team. Another field goal-like formation here for Wakefield as Willis keeps himself. Not much there. A big thing here, you can see e Luke Dixon lining up behind Willis a lot of the time to push him forward for a couple extra yards every time. Yeah, that'll be freshman Luke Dixon there. Really just trying to get those extra yards. He gets the handoff himself this time, but he will be stuffed. Doesn't look like a gain in anything there. And more fans trickle in. Landrigan Field is packed today for this 61st annual Thanksgiving Day Stadium match. Third and eight here for Wakefield. I believe we are yet to see a passing yes. play for Wakefield. game may be working on this opening drive. The more and more you do it, the more predictable it's going to get as we see another run by quarterback Javen Willis, and he's not going to get much. They are in field goal range here, but that's going to be short of the first down. Third down, four. Fourth down, four. Looking at fourth and four here for Wakefield. And I think the smart play here is just to go for the field goal. I think it's too early in this game to try to push for it on fourth down, especially on fourth and four. Well, you got to think, if you're running all the time, you're draining so much clock. So, I mean, unless the drive was quicker. Ooh. They get an offsides there on Melrose on the hard count. And that's just what Wakefield needed there. And that'll be a first down there, costly mistake for Melrose. And while it may be early, that could be a deciding factor in this game. You really got to pay attention here in these games. And that'll be the end of the first quarter there as well. 12 minutes down, 36 to go in this Thanksgiving Day match. Melrose Red Raiders are going to be in leading here. 7 0, and Wakefield still on their opening drive. Now, the way this is game is going, I expect to see a lot of lengthy drives from both teams, especially when they're favoring the run game here. Even their run game is great, but their passing game is also great. We also have Wakefield players like Christian Delgado, who has had six interceptions, oh, sorry, a receiving touchdown this season. And Ian Dixon, who has also had three receiving touchdowns. Brian Lynch, three receiving touchdowns. And sophomore receiver Stephen Royce had three receiving touchdowns. The last game we commentated, Ian Dixon looked like he was the best player on the field. Yeah, I'm surprised the Warriors have not utilized their tight end, Ian Dixon, yet. Clearly one of the better Warriors on the field. And only being a junior from Wakefield, a lot more in store for him next season as well. Switch sides here. This will be ball on the 16-yard line. First and 10 here after that false start by Melrose. Yeah. 
And it's going to be another run here. Uh, Willis there. Willis quarterback definitely getting a great gain there. And while that hand injury may have affected his passing game, it's definitely not affecting his rushing game here. Great run there by Willis. I think if Wakefield can just trick him enough with a play action pass here, you got a touchdown. Again, we're seeing that almost field goal formation with Luke Dixon standing right behind the quarterback there. And it's going to be another run. Oh. Willis running out to his outside, passing. Ooh. Very contested coverage right there. Not sure what Willis was doing throwing that ball. I think he had a better chance to run that. Absolutely. Ian Dixon, the attendant receiver on that play. And Melrose just absolutely just covering Dixon. Like a blanket. Absolutely, yeah. Ian had nowhere to go on that play. So the third and one here for Wakefield. Ryan Winch lining up outside. And I think they just need a run here. Get the first down, get a new set of downs, and see how it goes from there. And that they will do, and more. Getting close to and that goal line. And it's going to be a touchdown. Nathan Delgado with the touchdown there through a very contested middle of the field. Great run there by Nathan Delgado. And we feel immediately setting up for the point after. Mark Letcher is lining up for this one. He's looked good all season on these. And it's going to be good. Sophomore Mark Letchford with a great kick there. And that's going to tie it up. 7-7 seven, seven here. And at this rate, hopefully we're in for a very exciting game between these two teams. It's looking good. If a couple of runs can break out, this will go down in the books as one of the best games. Absolutely. Wakefield really trying for a win here. They have not won since, again, since 2013. Eight years here without a win on this Thanksgiving Day man. So let's see what Wakefield has for this kickoff. Captain Shea Fogarty and Liam Maher getting ready to receive the kick here. And Letchford on the kick. Set up for the kickoff here. Wedgeford with the boot. No rows for 38. Right up to about the 35 there. Shea Fogarty there. Getting a decent gain here to start off this Melrose drive. Fogarty looks to be one of their main weapons here. Wakefield isn't doing the best containing him, but their strength has been stopping that middle run. And while Melrose's strategy is to go outside, I think they can get a good job here if corners uh, Stephen Weish and Ian Dixon can get in there. Yeah, especially the corner, uh, Christian Logato here, who has had six interceptions this season, as along with a pick six, so. He'll hopefully make a difference as a cornerback here for Wakefield. And like clockwork, Wakefield stuffs that inside run. Not much of a gain there for Melrose's captain, Shea Fogarty. 
get three yards there for Fogarty. Second and seven here for Melrose. Ball right on the 39-yard line. Looks like they're going to go for a passing play here. It's going to be a QB right sneak the there. For Botto. Botto getting free, making a move, picking up a good amount of yardage there. Looking at a 25-yard gain there for Botto. Great run there for Botto. And I think that was a designed run. The line kind of split a hole straight yep. up the middle there for Botto. Making a nice pocket there for him to throw. And we got a timeout here for Wakefield trying to regroup. Oh, learn how to stop that run. Wakefield's first timeout there. And a disappointing start here for Wakefield's defense, I'm not going to lie. They've had a great season along with a lot of great stops, but this, these two opening drives have just been disappointing so far. Really have not been making too many stops. They seem unprepared for the quarterback sneak. Yeah, just not too many great stops by the, by the defensive line or the cornerbacks. Yeah. Let's see if they can turn that around. here for Waco has got to be where are those linebackers? Absolutely. They sort of go under the radar as one of the most important positions in football because they need to be wherever the play is going. Backfield set here for Melrose. It's going to be another handoff there. Not much a gain for Captain Shea Fogarty, the Red Raiders. Okay, second and seven on the 32 here for Melrose. And for, Wake, for Wakefield's linebackers, we see Nathan Ickes, senior captain, Chris Amione along with Ian Dixon, and Luke Ickes as well. So they're gonna have to get some big stops here to stop Melrose from scoring again. And it's gonna be another run there. Gonna be brought down by Ian Dixon there, really just chasing after this quarterback as he blows right by the Ickes and Ickes combo. And well, it might look frustrating here for that Wakefield defensive line, that Melrose offensive line is looking incredible Absolutely. so far. Really just making making pockets for the quarterback to run through. Another run there for Shea Fogarty. And he's going to be brought down there. Just a handful of yards picked up there by Fogarty. Yeah, it'll be Timothy Connolly and Nathan Delgado there on the tackle. Nathan really just getting that stop there, running right into Shea Fogarty. Second and six here for Melrose, ball on the 16 yard line. Passing play. Almost picked off there by Nathan Delgado. Move, move there for Rob Colazzo. And he's going to be brought down by Christian Delgado, cornerback for Wakefield. Fortunately for him, sneaking through to pick up that first down. Ball looks to be spotted at the six yard line, seven yard line, first and goal. It'll be a nine yard gain there after that. And it'll be first down, seven. First and goal here, and it'll be another run. 
bottle up the middle. Finally, Wakefield plugging up them holes. Great stop there by the Wakefield from defensive line. Bordo on the carry for the five yard line. Two yard gain. Second and goal. Great stop there by Luke Ickes and Chris Amione there. Second and five here for Melrose. Votto's gonna take a snap. Votto faking the handoff. And Wakefield gets to him again, there you go. Great stop there by Wakefield. Luke Ickes again, great stop for him. Stephen Weiss charging through into there too. No game on the play, third down goal. And as the sun comes up, we're really starting to see Wakefield's defense come alive here. Let's see if they can get this third down stop here. Melrose training out over half the time in this quarter. It'll be another run here by the quarterback, and he's going to be wrapped up. Chris Amione, great tackle there by the senior captain, Chris Amione. Amazing. That'll bring up fourth and four here. That's just a stop Wakefield needed. Wakefield, Melrose, I'm sorry, looking like they're going to take a field goal here. It's a smart call by Tim Morris there. You don't want to go for the touchdown too early, especially on fourth and four. Great goal line stand there by Wakefield. Let's see if Zach Federico can get the field goal here. Looks to be good. And the kick is good. Sailing way over the uprights and into the stands out there. Oh, 10-7 here for Melrose, as that was a very lengthy drive. Lots of run plays, as we expected. This truly is returning into the running game here. Wakefield with not too much time left to score. Just under half the quarter has gone by already. I feel like it will be very tough for Wakefield to score here, especially with their run-focused offense so far. Absolutely. I think they're going to need a, definitely a couple of big gains, and I think they're really going to have to turn to their passing game. And we know they definitely have a strong passing game. So. I think it all starts with a good return here, though. Absolutely. If they can just get themselves into field goal range and maybe even hit it, that would set themselves up great for receiving in that second half. Captain Leo Yardumi and uh, looks like Bobby DeFeo getting ready to receive the kick. And Zach Federico will take the kick. In. And it's going to grab there by DeFeo. He's going to get past the 20. Up to about the 30 there for DeFeo. Yeah, Wakefield's receiving team really just trying to push him through. And then we'll get him right around the 30 yard line, maybe just ahead. Although Willis might be a little impaired here in the passing game, I think a good screen would do Wakefield a good amount of damage here. Field goal formation here, definitely with the cover game here. Handoff up the middle to Delgado. Not much there. With a formation like this, 
Wakefield not really getting too much of a gain. They're getting consistent gains of under five yards, which will help them in the short game, but in the long game, they're really going to need to score with this time running out quickly. Absolutely. A score here sets them up to win the game, really. Again, that field goal formation almost. This time, no receivers outside. That's very predictable. They're doing it in motion, but he's not going to get the carry. Willis falling forward for about five more yards there. That's a four yard gain for Wakefield to the 34. Third down and three. Third and three here. Again, that almost field goal formation for third and three. Really trying to get the first down here. Be a handoff to Yardumian. Yardumian tries to take it up the middle, but nothing there. Yeah, it seems like he had a lost his footing there as he grabbed the ball. So not much of a gain here. Fourth and two there. Just just over a yard gain there for Yardumian. The ball is going to be pretty much right on the 40-yard line here. Clock ticking down to four minutes left in this half. Wakefield has already used two minutes and have gained pretty much 10 yards. They need this first down and then a big chunk play soon. Again, that field goal formation here. I say Willis will take this straight up the middle. With Dixon behind him pushing him forward. Timeout, Wakefield. Fourth and two here for the Wakefield Warriors. The Red Raiders really trying to get a stop here. It's about 3.30 left in this half. Wakefield's gonna punt here on fourth and two. It'll be Zach Satori, Zay Capilot as they call him on the punt here. Oh, it's a fake. Big punt. And they're going to get Wakefield the first down. Gets that first down. Gutsy call there for Wakefield. I love it. Great first down there for Nathan Delgado. And that's just what Wakefield needed. Another good play there. They had the false start on last drive, and now. They're getting the fake punt there to get the first down. So be three minutes, ball on the 44. First and 10 here. Same formation as they've been in all game. And we hand off to Nathan Delgado. He's gonna get not too much of a gain there. Nathan Delgado on the Looks to be part of the 47 yard line. Second and six. Wakefield not even crossing over the 50 yet, so I think they're really going to have to turn to their passing game if they even want to get in field goal range here. Absolutely. I think a play like the play action they ran on the goal line earlier would get them a good amount of yards here. And that field goal formation almost. There we go. It's a pass. And Willis is going to run it. Getting out of bounds smartly there. there. And he'll get inside the 50, right around the 40-yard line for Wakefield. And definitely smart there for Willis to run out of bounds and stop the clock. Especially with Wakefield only having one timeout left in this half. And Melrose also having... Melrose has three timeouts, haven't used a single one, and I don't think they plan to. Second and 
After a big gain, this will be first and 10 on the 40 yard line. And it's gonna Delgado be a handoff to Delgado. Delgado. Not too much of a gain there. Yeah, it looks to be stopped right where they started. I think you gotta turn back to the pass here. Absolutely, the second and 10 here. And just minute 30 left, pretty much. And it'll be a handoff to Delgado, and he'll try to run the outside. He's gonna be swamped up. And this Melrose defense is almost forcing Wakefield to go for a pass play here. Third and long here, not changing the formation. It'll be a pass, though. Willis looking to run it. What was he thinking there? He had several targets out there and just crumbles under the pressure there, not making much of anything. Way out to his left, he seemed to have Steven Woish basically for a touchdown out there. Okay, fourth, fourth and nine, and nine here. for Wakefield. Even though Willis is going to get caught up, he's still going to gain a yard. And Wakefield, only 30 seconds left to score here. Pass to Nathan Delgado. What a catch there from Delgado. Oh, no, he dropped it. I thought he pulled that down, but good play there by the Melrose defense. And I'll still leave 25 seconds on the clock. The only fortunate thing about that play is that it stops the clock. Melrose still has a chance to score here. We've seen a lot of huge runs from them. But this is not what Wakefield wanted at all. Pass play here. Or not, as. Lotto takes it up the middle. He gets hit hard there, but not after. Not until he gets a good, huge gain right there. Timeout for Melro, stopping this clock at 16 seconds. Jack Bernardo here with that huge hit. Sixteen seconds here. Melrose is gonna take a timeout. And don't forget, Wickfield does get the ball here to receive, so. That a defensive is defensive stop would really help them right here. Absolutely. Morrow is also leading 7-10 here. Wakefield really needs something here. Melrose can charge through into field goal range right here. I think that would really help them in the end of things. Melrose taking their time here on this timeout. Let's see what Captain Trevor Botto here ha has here on this. These last 16 seconds of this first half. Another run here for Botto, and he's going to get up the middle. He's going to get a decent gain there. Another first down there for Botto. I mean, he's really just toying with this Wakefield defense. They can't figure him out. And Votto is going to be brought down by the 
Wakefield quarterback, Javen Willis there, so quarterback to quarterback tackle there. Just about nine seconds here left. They, Melrose is in field goal range, so I wouldn't be surprised if they just go for the easy field goal and make this a 13-7 game. I think they might try to toss up a end zone shot right here as quick as they can. And if that gets knocked down, then they'll go for the field goal. Here comes the Red Raiders offense. Jamie Haggerty setting up on the outside along with Stefan Fogarty and Ralph McLaurin. And that's gonna be a decent gain there by Liam, by Brady Pitcher, excuse me on that pass. And this will bring up four seconds as Melrose uses their last time out. This will get them definitely in field goal range here. That was a smart play there by Melrose. Something that Wakefield hasn't done yet is get those good, yeah, good passing plays. Pass players, yeah. Zach Federico here taking the kick for Melrose. He's one for one on the PAT and one for one on the field goal try. So let's see if we can make it two for two on field goal tries here. Bit of confusion here between both teams. Not sure what's happening on the field, but let's see if Federico can take this. And a half, Federico, it's up, and it is good. And the kick is good. At the end of the first half, with the score of Melrose 13, the way to seven. And it'll be Melrose leading here in this opening half. 13-7, Red Raiders. A disappointing start for Wakefield. Just back to 33 yard field goal by Zach Federico, making the score 13. 24 minutes down, 24 to go. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please. Let's see what both teams have in store for the second half. 50 yard line. The Walt Page Walton Field, the Wakefield High School JV dance team. The dance team has an amazing season. It was capped off by winning first place in the JV and hip hop division and third place in the Kong division in their final competition of the year.
Please welcome to the field the Wakefield High School varsity team to be led by Captain Sophia Callahan, County Ford, Lily Hagen, Kaylee and Bird. The varsity games team has an amazing season which is capped off as the state runner-up in the Jazz Division and third place in the Hip-Hop Division at the 2021 Mass Fall MSAA State Game Tournament. This fall has been a very exciting season for Wakefield, and we have to acknowledge three of our teams that for outstanding work. At this time, we're going to call the girls' cross country team as they are the MIA Division IIA state champions. and not to be outdone, but the Boris Cross Country team are the MAA All-State Champions as well. Congratulations to both cross-country teams. At this time, we'd also like to acknowledge the Wakefield 34th grade youth football team as they are the state champions this year. Once again, let's hear for the 34th grade state champion. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to attention to the people as the Mellors, Ben and Telegram are taking the field for their final performance.
he's done now he's in the field for the last time of the season. The 2021 New England champion platinum medal and winning Wakefield Warriors to be able to perform in their entire 2021 field show entitled Streetlight. Big Green featuring the music of George Dawson, Billy Joel, Lynn Memoir, Miranda, Jay-Z, and Alicia Keys. Sit back and watch the power of the Minnesota Wakefield Warrior Marching Band.
Welcome back, everybody, to this Thanksgiving Day matchup. It'll be the Melrose Raiders against the, your Wakefield Warriors here. Melrose Red Raiders leading 13-7 after a touchdown and two field goals, and Wakefield only having a single touchdown. It'll be Wakefield receiving here. A disappointing first half for the Warriors here, but a great half for the Melrose Red Raiders. Lots of stops and a great plays on offense. Let's see if Wakefield can have a great start here this second half be fielded by DeFeo here. And he's going to be brought down right around the 27-yard line there. And Wakefield so far really utilizing their running game here. Not much has gone on in their passing game. I'd be looking for them to switch it up here if they want a chance to wear down this defense. Yeah, lots of run plays by the likes of Javen Willis, the quarterback, senior captain, running back Leo Yardumian, and running back Nathan Delgado. Some real highlights from Delgado in that first half. Yeah, having one rush over 20 yards there which helped lead Wakefield to a touchdown. And it'll be a handoff to Delgado here, and he'll get a decent gain there. It'll be a bit short of the first down. A flag on the play after the ball was marked dead, so. Maybe unsportsmanlike conduct on one of the Melrose players. Let's see what the rest say. Dead ball for our unsportsmanly conduct, Wakefield, 15-yard penalty. There will be an unsportsmanly conduct on Wakefield. That's a hefty penalty there. Especially after such a good game. Ball's going to go all the way back to the 20-yard line. And it's second and 15 here for Wakefield. not what Wakefield wants to start this second half. Really just pushing him back for no good reason whatsoever. Yeah, I did not see the penalty there. Neither did I. I saw a couple Melrose players arguing, but I did not see anything from Wakefield. Dixon switching down sides on that. It'll be a handoff to Will oh, Willis. Oh, Leo Yardumi, excuse me. Decent gain, but still not much after that big penalty. Third down and long here. And I can guarantee you, head Wakefield coach John Raftree is not happy with that Wakefield with that unsportsmanlike conduct call. Absolutely not. Nothing you want to see from his players. This will be third and eight here.
Ryan Litz setting up on the outside, the only receiver. And Fake for Willis. Stumbles a bit. Looking to take it himself, but Melrose was up with it. He'll gain a bit, but not much at all. Fourth and six here for the Warriors. And they're going to bring out the punting team. Hunter Zach Satori getting ready now. Wakefield almost had a punt, but it ended up being a fake to Nathan Delgado. And you'll see him right by the center here. So let's see if they're going to fake it again. And it won't be a fake. And a disappointing punt there. Not but a great got punt a good for roll. And they're going to let it roll. Not the best punt there from Junior Zach Sartori. And this is not what Wakefield wanted to start this game. They're already down by six and not making many moves on offense here. Absolutely not. That penalty was a game changer. Absolutely. Just fit that 15-yard setback, kept them from the first down, and ended up causing a turnover. Let's see if Wakefield's defense can make a great stop. They've had a lot of forced turnovers here, fumbles and interceptions, so let's see if they can get one on this drive here. Be a handoff there to Liam Maher. He'll pick up a few. Not enough for first down, but decent game there. Lots of big runs from the Melrose Red Raiders here. And I assume they're going to stick with their running game as it's been successful for this half. Look at an empty backfield here. Lots of receivers setting up. Thought I was going to take the snap and it'll be a pass. Right to Shea Fulgerty. Another captain on the team. We're going to be looking at third and inches here for the Red Raiders. And I assume even if the Wakefield gets a stop on Third down, I assume the Raiders are going to go for, for go for it on fourth down, especially with it only being third and inches. Absolutely. And with the way their run-heavy offense has been working, they'll look to drain some clock in this drive. Looks like that might be a false start, maybe. And that would be huge for Wakefield if it was. Yeah. Yeah. Off sides on Wakefield, gifting them that first down. I believe that was senior captain Leo Yardumian just jumped the gun a bit too quick, really trying to get in there again to sack Botto. But a bit too quick, and unfortunately that's going to give the Red Raiders the first down. And penalties so far in this half have not been in Wakefield's favor. This is not what this Wakefield team wants, already being down by six. First and 10 here, inside the 50 here, ball on the 47. Thought I was gonna take the snap. Lots of receivers in the backfield. He's gonna throw it, caught. Brady pitcher there. And that'll be enough for another first down there for Melrose. First down and just short, we'll see how the refs place the ball. And they're gonna give him the first down. Red Raiders so far have just been moving the chain so far after getting that penalty. Now they're just utilizing that and going with it. We handoff here. We have Maher in motion there taking that. Not too much of a gain there at all. And I'll tell you, if Wakefield does not get this stop, they will most likely lose this game. Absolutely. After being down per two scores, with a quarter and a half to go, that is not enough time, especially with the way this Wakefield team has been running the ball. Looking at another pass here for Melrose. Wakefield needs a stop here. Otto drops Big back, pass play. Deep, just out of reach of Otto Abenice. 
intended receiver on the play. And I don't think that was a receiver's fault at all. I think it was just a bit of an overthrow there by Trevor Botto there, quarterback. Wakefield just getting lucky on that. I wouldn't consider that a stop at all. They just, I guarantee if that ball was caught, that would have been another touchdown. Absolutely. Botto looking to pass again. Getting pressured. Ian Dixon really chasing down Otto. Oh, he swifts out of the hands of Albanese. That Otto would have been a great play there for Melrose, but. Another misplay. Yeah. Fourth right and ten here. here. Fourth and ten. This is the most important play of the game for Wakefield. And are they going to bring out their kicker here? He's three for three so far, I believe. They do look to be going for it. Fourth and ten here. Wakefield needs a stop. Huge stop here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a run right up the middle by, by Votto. No, great pressure from Wakefield, and they sack him. Great tackle by senior captain Brian Lynch. However, there is a flag on the play. Let's see if that works out in Wakefield or Melrose's favor. Either way, an amazing tackle by senior captain Brian Lynch. The penalty against Melrose has been declined. It is Wakefield's ball at the 40. And that is what Wakefield needs. A score here will take them at 14-7. Even a field goal will get them in close range here. But if we see plays like that from Brian Lynch and other members of the defensive line and defense by Wakefield. This game, Wakefield's going to be back in this game and back in the lead. But if Wakefield wants to score, they're going to need to do something other than their run game. Their run game has not been successful so far, and the more they go to the run game, the more predictable it's going to be, and the more this Melrose defense is going to be able to read them. Absolutely. This Wakefield offense has basically been a blank slate. Other than that first drive, there's been no surprises. Decent gain there by Yardumia. Second and two here for the Warriors. Just in the first Six minutes of this quarter has gone by, only six minutes to go. Again, that field goal formation almost for Wakefield here. Bobby DeFeo in motion there. Willis taking it himself. He's going to get a great Marching game the outside, there. outside, cut back inside. And that is a great game there from Willis. Huge game there for Willis. Looks like the ball started on the 33 yard line. 17 yard game and the Warriors first down. 17 yards there for Willis. What a play. First and 10 here, ball on the 33. Again, that field goal formation. Be a handoff there to Yardumian. And he's gonna get a decent gain there. And it seems like these rushing plays are just tiring out this Melrose defense just over and over and over again. Or Wakefield's offense just seems to be stepping up. This offensive line just seems to be pushing more and more. I believe Javen Willis has been subbed out of the game here. Looks like Brian Lynch lining up at that quarterback spot. Lynch is going to take it. Another decent gain there. And that might be enough. For, that's going to be enough for the first down, I believe. Wakefield really charging through on this drive. 
And this Melrose defense just seems to have left their power in the locker room. No, no big stops here for this Melrose defense. And even they're wondering what's going on. First and 10 here, ball of the 17. Winch still in at quarterback. Dixon lined up behind him. Delgado taking that one all the way up to about Great the five game yard line. For Delgado, inside the 10, maybe even inside the five. And at this rate, with this run game, we're looking at 14 7 Warriors. Looks like they'll spot it at the six here, first and goal. And Brian Lynch still in here. And Wakefield's kind of realizing if this running game is going to keep working, we're going to keep using it. Delgado with a short game there. It'll be a three-yard gain there for Delgado. Ball on the three. We'll gain three on that last play. Let's see if they can gain three again for the touchdown. Brian Lynch still in for quarterback here. Winch faking the pitch. Goes up himself. Just stopped. It'll be a one yard gain there for Lynch. Third and two. Now even if they get stopped here, I feel like they're gonna go for it on fourth down. They really wanna get the chain's moving, and I don't see them going for a field goal, especially on third and goal. Only two yards to that end zone. Absolutely, you gotta try something different. Yardumian, and he's just swamped. Nowhere to go for Leo Yardumian. Fourth and one. Here comes Willis, back out here. I think you need to bring out a Cam Newton-like play here. Absolutely. Diving over the top. Oh, excuse me, Brian Lynch is still in. Brian Lynch, tall guy, he could easily jump over this offensive line. Winch reaching for it. And he's not going to be in for the touchdown. Stop short of the end zone. Disappointing there for the Wakefield offense. Nothing else to say but disappointing. It's not what that Wakefield offense needed. It's not what they wanted. And it's not what they got. And the Red Raiders are going to get the ball now. On the one yard line. They are trapped deep here in their own field. If Wayfield can get a good stop here, then a punt would set them up well. Absolutely, and we also saw a great play by Brian Lynch there, uh, sacking the Red Raiders' quarterback. Let's see if he can do that again and cut force a safety. That would be huge for Wakefield. Lots of receivers setting up in the backfield. Gardumian attacking, good pressure. Huge Fired throw, off. way out of bounds. Second and 10 here, no gain on the play. Only a minute 40 left in this third quarter. Wakefield with good pressure there. They've been great with pass pressuring in this half. It's tough to run out of your own end zone because if you get stuffed, it's a safety. Now let's see if Wakefield's defense can keep the pressure here. They're gonna be looking at first and ten on the goal line. The Wakefield offense. Second and ten here. Raiders looking to run. 
And that's a safety. Wakefield defense coming up clutch there. And that's what this Wakefield defense wanted. That's exactly what they needed. Even without the touchdown, they can still come up with the safety. And this student section and this Wakefield crowd is electric after that big safety. Huge play for Wakefield. This could be the game changer here, folks. Absolutely. What a great job by that Wakefield defense. They've come out guns blazing in the second half. And this Wakefield de defense has really been the story this whole season. Great plays throughout the entire season and really trying to clutch up and bring this Wakefield offense a great start. And they have so far. Monroe's sideline trying to rally and get their players that motivation they need. And it'll be Willis and Yardumian getting ready to receive the kickoff. Bobby DeFeo just, I believe, on the sideline. And it's going to be fielded by Willis. And he's off to the races. There goes Willis. To the outside. Ooh. And into the Melrose 40-yard line. Great run fly. by Willis. Two flags on the play almost immediately as Willis was brought down. Wakefield's quarterback really showing a huge run game here. Going to have a penalty there for Wayfield. That will bring him back into their own 47-yard line. But regardless, still an amazing return there by Willis. It's probably the best return all day here, so even with the penalty, they still have great starting field position. And Willis looks to be in at quarterback again for Wakefield. And Luke Dixon setting up behind Willis, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a QB sneak of Luke just trying to push Javen through. It's a pass play. Willis. Caught by Leo Yardumian. Big first down there for Wakefield. I think that's the first completed pass of the day for Wakefield. Great play there. And see, just like that, Melrose off, Melrose's defense was not expecting that pass play. And that's gonna be a big first down for Wakefield. Steven Woish setting up outside, only receiver. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a run get play here. On first down. And a run by Leo Yardumian there. Got knocked forward for a good amount of yards there. And if I'm Wakefield, I'm not looking to just get in field goal range. I want that touchdown. Absolutely. Willis coming back out here. And it's really disappointing that Wakefield has not utilized their passing game. Great receivers like Leo Yardumian, Ian Dixon, and Christian Delgado. Wakefield's to start utilizing those. Steven Woish setting up outside. Delgado in motion on that, and it'll be a Willis run for Willis. Himself. As he dives in for a bit of extra yardage. Gain a two on the play. Third. We'll be looking at third and five here for Wakefield. And 
that will end off the third quarter there. Third and four for Wakefield. Ball on the 26-yard line. Ryan Lynch setting up outside. Delgado in motion. Takes himself. Another run there. Huge block there by Luke Dixon. And what a great first block. Down. That's just what Wakefield needed. Great block there by Luke Dixon, the freshman there. Yeah, that allowed for that burst of speed there from Willis. And that allowed for that first down. And that first down sets up Wakefield inside the 20 here. See what Wakefield's got in here in the red zone. For that field goal formation again. You're doing me an emotion. He's going to take the snap. Falling forward for a handful of yards there. Unnamed Melrose player with a decent, with a good tackle there. Second and seven here, ball on the 15-yard line. Whitefield staying with this bunch formation the whole game. Hand off to Delgado. And Tough he will fight, fight for there. those yards. Just about a gain of two there. Mason Delgado on the carry down to the 14-yard line. Third and five. Third and five here for Wakefield. Wakefield needs to score here. Looks like it's going to be a handoff to Yardumi in there. Yardumi in charging through, but it looks like he's short of the first down there. And if I'm Wakefield, I'm going for this fourth down. I see no reason to stay complacent. Fourth and one here. Spotter on the nine yard line, so third, fourth and inches here. This is what Wakefield needs. Lewis running outside, tipped, tipped up, off. intercepted by Melrose. Interception, interception by interception Captain there. Shea Fogarty there. And after going for the running game all game, Willis. 
limping off the field. That's not what Wakefield wants to see. Great interception there by Captain Shea Fogarty, but if you're gonna play the run game all game and go for a pass play on fourth and one, I don't know what Wakefield head coach John Rappertree is planning, but either way, this will be first and 10, ball and 10 for Melrose here. And this Wakefield defense has been ste stepping up in the second half. Let's see, if they get another safety here, that'll be huge. They just gotta remain consistent. Be a handoff here, wrapped up, swamp, not even a. Not a chance of getting through right there. This Wakefield defense has been stepping up. Absolutely. Pressure up the middle has been immaculate. Lots of receivers setting up. And it's gonna be a QB sneak here. And he's Bono not gonna get much of anything. Wayfield holding him well for the first time in this game, really. Third and four here. This is a huge stop here for Wayfield. This is what they need here. Absolutely huge play. Let's see what Melrose sets up in. Both teams still having three timeouts with just eight minutes left in this game. I'd be looking at a, either a pass or a QB run here for Melrose. Pass play here. Great tackle there from Chris Amione. Senior captain Chris Amione stepping up here. And a perfect play there from Amione. And that Wakefield defense. This defense has been airtight in the second half. Fourth and seven here. And this, these Melrose Red Raiders. The offense looks gassed. Setting up for the punt here. Terrible punt there from Melrose. And it's not even gonna get outside the 50 and it's gonna roll out of bounds. Chris Amione has been electric for this Wakefield defense today, having some great stuff. This entire Wakefield defense has just been the game changer here. I mean, the whole team really revolves around him. Absolutely. He's probably the best captain of this team, a true leader. Wakefield offense is going to set up again that bunched formation here. Yardumian in motion. It's going to be a direct snap, snap right to him. And Yardumian is going to get the first down and more. Huge gain there. Really fought for those extra yards. Tough physical running there for Yardumian. Again, that bunch formation there with Luke Dixon setting up behind quarterback Javen Willis. It's good to see Willis back in the game after he hobbled off to the sidelines. It's going to be a handoff to Delgado, and Delgado is getting it wrapped up. Delgado just, as soon as he got the ball, he pretty much stopped, not knowing what to do, and that's not what you want to see. We're just about at the halfway mark through this fourth quarter. And this is where you really start to see the battle against the clock. Absolutely. And that's really, time is really going to start to turn into a factor in this game. That being said, this Wakefield offense needs to turn it up. Second and 10 here for the Warriors. Ball right on the 23 yard line.
Delgado in motion there. And it's going to be a handoff to Yardumian, and he's going to get the first down. And a little bit more. Really fighting there. Yardumian has been the story for this Wakefield team on this second half drive. So this will be first and goal for the Warriors. This ball spotted right on the eight yard line, ball on the nine yard line, excuse me. And again with that bunch formation that's been working for him this drive. And it'll be a handoff to Yardumian and he's gonna be Yardumian. just short of the touchdown. Second and one, oh, first and Sorry, second and one for the Warriors. First and goal. And we've seen this before, but Melrose's offense really stepped up last time, so I'm sure they're going to try to do it again here. And this is absolutely four down territory for the Warriors. Like I said, I love to see a Cam Newton special here diving over the top. Look, it's a handoff to Yardumi, and he loses his footing. And is he going to be in for the touchdown? Just short. Third and one here for the Warriors. Four and a half minutes left to go. Fans rallying here for the Wakefield Warriors. They're doing me in motion. It's going to be a handoff to him. Touchdown, Touchdown for Wakefield. Yardumian. Wakefield taking the lead. Four minutes left to go in the game. 15 13 Warriors. Great play there from the hard nosed Wakefield offense. And Yardumian didn't even have to dive in. He just waltzed right into the end zone. He looked great that drive. Yeah. Wakefield needs this point after. No, no. Wakefield. Timeout Wakefield. Now, does Wakefield go for two points here? Are they going to risk it or are they going to play it safe? A I say you play it safe here. Absolutely. Because if you miss that, Melrose can win with down a, field goal. a field goal. Yeah. And they're kicker has been on lock today. Warriors playing it. If the Warriors play it safe, he'll here it'll bring 16 to 3. And then I feel like it's all gonna come down to this kick by Letchford. Not on the point after, but on the kickoff. Because if Wakefield can get Melrose inside the 20 and just try to run down the clock, this Wakefield defense can make some great stops. Yeah, it's a big point for Melrose. They haven't been getting like 10 yard gains, never mind seven yard gains. They've been running the ball. Yeah, this second half, they haven't been doing too much and they're gonna go for it. Two point conversion here. And I like this call. With the way the Wakefield defense has been going, I can see this being turning. It's gutsy, but Melrose stops them. Not what Wakefield wanted. Absolutely not. It's a gutsy call, but it shows how much the coach really trusts his defense. Just over four minutes left to go in this game.
game 728 days in the making. 728 days since these teams have faced off for the football game. This student section is electric for these this Warriors off. This kick right here. This is a deciding factor in this game. We need a great kick by Letchford here. This is the start to the Wakefield defense trying to close up right this on, game. Get it right on the 10. Great tackle there from Stephen Weish. Great tackle there by the sophomore, Stephen Weish. Stephen Weish, a promising and an up and coming star for this Wakefield team. And this Melrose team still has three timeouts. So I imagine they're gonna try to really make this drive as lengthy as possible. Absolutely, they don't wanna give Wayfield any time left. Let's see if this Wakefield defense can come up with some big stops. Looking for a pass, they stay in bounds. And I don't think they're going to mark that as complete. Incomplete pass. Looks like he did not gain control of that ball as he fell over. I think Wayfield's got to be ready for a lot of passes here. Looks like it's going to be a pass play. Caught by Liam Maher, and he's not going to get much of a gain. Short of the first down. Third down here for Wakefield, for Melrose, excuse me. Third and five here. Stop here is crucial. A stop every play is crucial for Wakefield. And both these passing plays have been two quick comeback routes. Let's see what Melrose has here. It's gonna run be a run play. And he gets stopped. About two yards there, it'll be fourth and two. Great tackles there by Chris Amioni and Brian Lynch, both senior captains, really stepping it up. Wakefield team trying to rally here. This crowd is on their feet. Melrose is confused. They got to take a timeout. Just under three minutes left to go in this game. Fourth and three. The entire Wakefield student section is standing up. The Wakefield sideline trying to rally their fans here as Melrose comes back onto the field. This stadium, this Landrigan field comes alive here as we enter the closing three minutes of this game. Fourth and three, ball on the 34. Four wide Votto's going to take the snap Votto for a pass. Snap. Intercepted, Intercepted by Jack Baronado. Baronado! Take it in all the way! Jack Baronado with a pick six. With a cast on his arm. And immediately Wakefield sets up for the extra point and the Melrose section goes silent. 
as the Wakefield section explodes. And no good on the point after. And that might be costly. That keeps it a one score game. That's exactly right. This that extra point could have made it a two score game and sealed the deal for Wakefield, but this Melrose offense given a second chance here. I mean, just what a play by the Wakefield defense. Wakefield defense has been the game changer in this game. I don't know what they talked about in the locker room at the second half, but they talked about the right things. <laughs> Melrose team trying to rally here. Get something going. And all the momentum is on Wakefield's side. You can hear their sideline from here. Meanwhile, the Melrose sideline is silent and in disarray. After missing the point after, Mark, Mark Letchford needs a great kick here. Although this um, Melrose offense has not been stepping it up the second half, this their first, they might tap in here and really just try to pull through. I'd say with two minutes, two timeouts, you got more than enough time. It's just about how you perform. They get a great field position here. This game is very close. Squib kick there for Wakefield. Not trying to wet up a bigger turn. Right on the 41 yard line, Melrose is gonna take this. And I think after that interception, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of run plays for Melrose. It seems like their biggest weakness is getting down the field. Deeper passes of even like past five yards. I don't think I've Only seen any. Only two linebackers setting up there. for Wakefield. Takes a snap, huge pass play. Good pressure from Wakefield. Almost picked off. But great coverage there, swatting it down, Stephen Boish. Second and 10 here for the Red Raiders. The Red Raiders are not scared to go back for the passing game after that interception. They want to score. Second and 10, ball on the 41. Another pass play here. Fumble there. Ooh, and it's recovered by Melrose. Going to be a big loss there. Nathan Delgado. Dual threat here on offense and defense. Forcing a fumble and getting a 20 yard gain all in the same game. For sure, Bado's going to be feeling that one tomorrow. What a play. And the Melrose offense is just in disarray. Third and 17 here. Nowhere to go. And a stop here besides the game. And a timeout. They're second of this half. Only one timeout left here for Melrose with a minute 41 left in this game. plays made by the Wakefield defense, this game would not look like what it is. The Absolutely Wakefield not. defense has been stepping it up. After a disappointing first half, they are coming out here and dominating the Melrose offense. 
Third and 17 here. Wakefield only rushing three here. Setting up for a pass play. And he's just gonna run it out of bounds. Nowhere to go. No tar targets there to pass to. And the Wakefield defense is looking amazing. Has been unstoppable here. This Wakefield defense has not allowed a single score this second half. Another pass play here. Airs it out. Deep. Broken up. Wakefield looking like the Atlanta 2016 no fly zone. And I'd say that's about it. A win, sign, Sealed and delivered by this airtight Wakefield defense. And Melrose players looked like they were trying to get a pass interference call, but the refs were not letting up on that. And the Melrose section is heading out. What a game here for both teams. Looks like a little penalty there. Sending him back five yards, and it won't really make a difference. Wakefield lining up here just to run the clock out, really. A handoff to Yardumian. Flags on the field, pushing and shoving between both teams. As this game goes to a close, and as the Wakefield Warriors season comes to a close, big shout out to all the seniors from Wakefield. Dom DeVito, Matt B, Leo Yardumian, Brian Lynch, C Captain Chris Amioni, Captain Brian Lynch, Captain Leo Yardumian, Nathan Alberti, and Josh Catino. Josh Huckins and Nathan Ickes, Tim Connolly, Luke Ickes, Jack Bernardo, and James Buckley. A great season by all of those seniors. and. Good luck on their future endeavors. And a look into the future here for the Warriors. Javen Willis, Stephen Weish, Nathan Delgado, all primed for great seasons next Absolutely. year. Absolutely. I'm sure it feels good to beat your rival for the last one of the year. Just another run. And Time out for Melrose here. Trying to get the ball back, see if they can maybe go for a Hail Mary near the end of the game.
after a disappointing first half being down 13-10. Wakefield really stepped it up here. 13-7, I believe. And it's just going to be another run. Delgado Nathan breaking Delgado. to the outside. And that first down is going to seal the game. Clock starts running. You can just kneel it out at this point. And there's no better way to end the season than a win on Turkey Day here. Absolutely. After eight years of not winning the Thanksgiving Day game against Melrose, Wakefield comes through. A safety, a pick six, and zero points allowed in the second half. And that's it. This Wakefield defense and this Wakefield team has won it. And the Wakefield fans are going to rush the field. For the first time since 2013, your Thanksgiving Day champions, the Wakefield Warriors. 21-13, Wakefield Warriors beat the Melrose Red Raiders. What a fantastic game. Warriors will finish six and four in the season. A great season, regardless of their playoff position. And no better way to end the season. Thank you all so much for joining us. Again, I'm Drew Skirmerhorn, along with Timothy Brown. Thank you all for a great season. Signing off for one last time.